So another interesting oil. It says ethyl saffron kate. I'm not 100% sure if that is a spelling mistake and it's not supposed to be ethyl saffron. Um, saffron, oh, I forget. Um, but I bought this off Perfumers World and uh, it says on the internet ethyl saffron kate and it's written on the bottle. So I don't know if that is a mistake and it's supposed to be the oil that I attempted to say or if it's just another oil with a very similar name. But it's, it smells very feminine, a little bit of tobacco and saffron. I think we can add a little bit of this. You could also smell a bit of red apple in there. Just touch my nose again. It's a real bad habit. So we're going to add two drops of that and that is at a 10% dilution. I think what I'm going to add is just a little bit of bagdanol. It's one of my favorite sandalwood molecules. It's not too loud. It's um, it definitely doesn't just sit there in the background, but it just blends very well. And I basically, I'm still trying to get this creamy element just to, to sort of take over the whole perfume. And I just need to, to build up that um, creamy accord. Um, and I, I'm gonna do that with sandalwood. I've just seen it out of the corner of my eye. And I think that will be a good place to go next. So as you can see, the, there's no method to my madness. At this point, I'm just going from the base to the top, to the heart, to the base again. I'm just all over the place. But once you get to a point where you build a base, you build a heart, you build a top, uh, but you're still not happy with it, then it's just a free for all. It's basically just smelling, adjusting, uh, you know, like I'm doing, just trying to build up certain elements that I want in the perfume that aren't presently there. And every now and then just smelling it to make sure we're on the right track. So we're going to add a little bit of Bacdanol. And with the Ebonol, we added two drops. I'm going to add, I'm going to add, I'm going to add four drops of Bacdanol. So what I'm trying to do is just fill in the cracks that are there in the perfume. And um, I'm doing that by adding similar oils so that everything just comes together and is more prominent together. I really love mint, specifically spearmint. And when I'm making a feminine perfume, well, you know, feminine male, it's I really have a battle with myself to stop me from adding spearmint. And I told myself I was gonna stop the last time I made a perfume, but I just got the molecule El Carbone. And although I have a couple of nice spearmint essential oils, I find this smell really fascinating. It is synthetic, but I think it's because I'm very familiar with the smell because I'm sure it's used in all products uh, that have a, a spearmint smell, um, you know, i.e. toothpaste. So I don't want to use a lot of it. It is pretty potent stuff, but I'm just interested to know how it works in a perfume in comparison to spearmint essential oil. And since this is an experiment, I'm just going to add a little bit of it Spearmint is a great oil. I really love adding it to um, top notes. When you're building your top notes, even just a little tiny bit of spearmint, so you, you don't smell it at all in the top. It, it really, I find it elevates everything else in the top. It's, it's, it's a really good filler oil. Uh, it's one of those oils that will fill the gaps if there is some gaps in your, your top. So I'm gonna add a little bit of it just as an experiment, just because I'm curious, just because I can. But I'm only gonna add a couple of drops. 
because you know adding something as potent as this can really transform your perfume and that might be a good thing it might be a bad thing so but yeah i'm just taking risks right now basically when i get new oils i just throw everything uh, but the kitchen sink into uh, my beaker. I just start off building things, trying things, smelling it, and I just learn so much. You learn all the things that don't work. You, you, you learn interesting accords, and all of this goes in your awareness, and then the next time you sit down to make a perfume, you you know, you know have a better idea of the kind of perfume you want to make, and then you instantly have access to all of this information stored in your brain of, uh, your experience with the new oils that you've got and you just know instantly yeah this will be good this won't be um so i just think that i find that a, as a, a great thing to do to um basically quickly learn lots about your oils is just to sit with all the new oils you've got make a perfume with all of them uh, it'll probably smell horrible although sometimes you can be pleasantly surprised and just see what happens you know just write everything down if you have to i don't um i have a really bad memory my short-term memory but when i'm doing creative things i just like to work like that and it's not specifically my head that's remembering um you know i don't know what magical link there is between your senses and your brain obviously the brain has something to do with it but my smell memory is much stronger than uh, my normal you know memory from experience so i just find that i work better like that but it's a great way for me it might not work for everybody but i just throw everything but the kitchen sink in there and i might discover something fantastic and i might discover lots and lots of horrible um, marriages between different oils but then i know not to use them in the same context again. So for me, it's just a really quick way to uh, get the grips with the materials that you have. So uh, let's not rub it on too much. So we've added some bagdanol. Um, what else have we got that can fill some gaps? Um, yeah, I'm looking at these new oils, like I know what they are and I've used them before. Uh, my mind's just a blank. But let's just see if we can find something. I have a really, uh, this is ivy base that I got. And that's incredibly green. Actually, this is, this is the oil that I was talking about. I put in hyacinth body, but this is the one that smells like tomato leaf. And this is ivy. So I think we will add a drop of that and we'll add a couple of drops of that. You know, I also have this Castorium fluorescence, which is an accord from Perfumers World. And I already have some real Castorium in this perfume. So I'm interested in um, this specifically because I wanna see how far it takes Castorium through the entire perfume. Uh, will it just stay in the base or will it help the Castorium note last longer? Will it be more prominent in the perfume? That's what I really wanna find out. And it smells really good. It's a really good likeness to my uh, Castorium Absolute. The, you, you know, you can tell that the Absolute is the real deal when smell smelling this uh, next to the Castorium Absolute. But this really is a, a good imposter. Yeah, and I get the feeling that this would actually work really good with the El Carbone. So how many, how much Castorium did we add originally? We added seven drops. Just add. We'll go for four drops. Now there's another oil that I'm really excited to use, which is Hair Absolute. And I think I'm done with the animalic, uh, with the animalic note in this perfume. 
but I really want to use here Absolute. And I'm just really interested to see how that smells in a perfume. Um, I have a 10% dilution. So I'm not quite sure if this will add something or take something away. If we can find it. Yeah, absolute 10% dilution. And lo and behold, it smells like here. I'm really gonna, I'm gonna add four drops of this as well. Oh, it's real, really dark. Oh, it's gonna turn the overall perfume an interesting green. Let's use four drops. Okay, so we're all over the place here, um, but this is the, this is what I like. Uh, I really like just um, sitting at the, this desk with all of these different materials and just bit of that, smell it, bit of this, bit of that, and just working with my intuition. It's really the connection that I love so much. So what now? Maybe isobutyl quinoline? No, definitely not. Way too musty. I'd actually like to, to open, well, no, not really. I guess kind of, I want to, I want to open up the perfume a little bit, but I also, I also want to have this depth and I feel like I have the layers. There's just nothing tying it all together. And I'm looking for that magic ingredient. I'm probably not going to find it amongst these new oils, but I'm just looking to see if there's anything else I really want to use before I go over into this cabinet. Fix it hours, that's the molecule I was looking for, the lily one. Yeah, fix it hour, that, that's actually what I was looking for. Yeah. And I was looking for lily, cyclamen, and aldehyde, yeah, this is with the other one. Yeah, fix it hour, we're gonna add a little bit of fix it hour which I believe is also a heart note, along with cyclamen and aldehyde. Yeah, I'm gonna add four drops of that. 